6.30 in the morning, as you can tell by my very tired face. And we had a very, very, very rolly night. The wind changed direction at about nine. <laughs> Put us beam onto the swirl. And we spent all night just rolling around in bed. So we're out of here. We're not even gonna wait for coffee. We're just gonna go try and find a more protected anchorage up the coast a little bit. Can't stay here, unfortunately. Bleary, bleary eyed. I would say that was our worst night ever at anchor. No, our worst night on this boat at anchor. Yeah, yeah. and honestly, for a catamaran, that's saying something. So just as a, what happened, there's a lot of swell that comes in here for some reason. There's, it's uh, The swell is coming from one direction and the wind from another. And we were fine for a bit. Um, and then the wind either dropped or shifted. So literally we'd beam onto the swell. And then we're just literally, we just rolled in like that for half the night. So yeah, I got up at half past five as the sun came up and I was like, Ugh. and then you got a beautiful sun, aren't you? But now, um, yeah, we need to get get out of here. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. There is absolutely no wind. It's like literally two knots of true wind. So, you right there? <laughs> so there's absolutely no wind. Um, so we're just motoring down the coast. It's an absolutely beautiful coastline. All these little coves, little beaches, little huts on beaches. I'm just saying like... A lot of it seems abandoned. Yeah, a lot of it does seem abandoned very remote and isolated even at the best of times. I mean, it probably always seems abandoned, babe. Well, maybe in the heyday of Po Pan Yang, before COVID hit. Maybe, it's hard to know. Well, that was a very short and sweet little journey up here. I can see the anchorage. There's quite a few boats in there. Mostly be charter boats, because there's not that many cruising boats around here. So that's reassuring. Hopefully they have a more comfortable night's sleep than we did, and we can stay here for a few days. Sea wind, though. So uh, you'll have the helm. You bring everything head to wind, and then the usual procedure. Yeah? We've got five knots, but it's enough to keep the boats yeah. in one direction, which is important. The fact that the boat will be pushed back by the wind. It says that the way that the chain falls through the bow roller, if it's off to the side and the boat's going sideways, the chain will just either skip the roller or something else. So even in low winds, it's important. Well, this is nice. Yeah. This is good. careful with this thing yeah yeah and not pull this laterally okay. Okay, so this comes off and then you lift this off yep. so this you lift a little bit of this chain up like this yeah literally just clip it over like that yeah okay. and then clip it down pull yeah it down you have to drop it so it's taken by the bridle yeah I know. the bridle came off the bridle's not on you need to stick the bright the boat hook through there and grab this bridle please Got it? Yeah. Seems like that happens a lot with this bridle. That's a design flaw with the bridle, babe. That's not. I understand what it is. Do you want to bring you your tool kit? Yeah, go and get the toolbox, please. Piece of shit bridle. Oh, next, just fixing the bridle. We've had some issues with that bridle. Not the first time it's um, just broken. So, yeah, this anchorage is much better. There's definitely still some swell coming in here, but if it stays like this, then that's fine. And or if we get some wind so we're actually kind of pointing in the right direction otherwise there is a the other part of the bay which you can just see behind me there um, which I think is a bit more protected but from what I can see there's a lot more fishing boats in there probably because it's a lot more protected so yeah if this becomes an issue then we can always 
have a little nose around there, see if we can find a better spot. Because I'm not ready to leave Koh Phangan. It's lovely. I don't want to have to go in search of a more calm anchorage because I want to stay here and explore. So we need to find a good spot. That took us seven attempts to anchor this boat. There are four boats anchored in this bay and we literally were just going, we must have given them some real morning entertainment. Literally just going around in circles, trying here, trying there. Could not get the anchor to dig in. What the f Roll bar anchors are f***ing necessity, right? I don't give two f***s about what sort of flukes it's got and what sort of shanks it's got. Without a roll bar, you're f***ed, right? On an anchor. I don't care what the f*** they design. We lived on a boat for seven years, anchored about every night for two years, set the f***ing anchor first time. Six times I've never had to ever set an anchor six times and also that bridle system that the not the, the snubber hook that can off my will just use a teabag like honestly the thing is that there's four other boats anchored here and i don't think they've got the bars to it in the chart boats the other two sea wings i'm more than happy to accept that this is operator error right <laughs> all right well let's have breakfast we haven't eaten i've got to get the meat left Yeah, that bullshit. Yeah, exactly. That was us. With all that motoring around the bay, at least we've got full batteries. I'll do some uh, laundry. That 1600 drive. Tried. Because A, I was literally sat there working and I thought to myself, am I going crazy or is that boat in a different position that I saw five minutes ago? And I thought maybe they just had too much anchor out and like we, the winds picked up, so I thought maybe they've just got a slightly different swing circle to everyone else. I was like, mm, okay, everyone was on board. And then, yeah, I just saw them bring their anchor up. Try, they've just tried to drop it again, but they're very close to us now. And if it um, drags again, then I'm feeling very vindicated because obviously we're not the only ones. <laughs> At least we dug in, you know, the wind's picked up and we're not moving. Maybe it's just like a really pebbly bottom or something. You should still dig in. Though. I know. I don't think it's a pebbly bottom. I don't know. The good news is that we're fairly confident that our anchor is now set. And we had a little chat and we can't work out what we're doing wrong, which is annoying because now we don't, we don't know how to change it. We don't know what else to do next time, what to do differently. And yeah, our anchor is a good anchor. We should be able to, I can't remember the name of the anchor. I can't remember the brand. I'll put it on the screen down here. It's meant to make sure that it lands in the right position so that when you pay the chain out and you start to back on it then, or back down on it, then it, uh, it digs in. I don't know what the problem was. Probably operator error, no doubt. But I am slightly vindicated by the fact that these guys also dragged their anchor and they have anchored again, like right in front of us, but it's fine. After you've anchored in Joss Van Dyke and the BVIs, then there is no such thing. As long as you're actually hitting each other, then you've, you've got enough distance between you. You're far enough away from each other. <laughs> yeah, if you know, you know. <laughs> And we have 90% battery uh, charge, set of charge. And Nick, we're drawing 12 amps. What is that? Is that your ice machine? It's, it's my ice machine. It's, it's your actually, ice machine. According to Shane, it's all these little LEDs. There's like thousands of them. Bullshit. It's 100% your uh, ice well, machine. Well, how, okay, just don't touch anything. How much is it touching now? It's drawing 12 amps. What is it drawing now? 9.8. <laughs> Hang on a 
second, but it said that. No, oh, I don't know. Anyway, okay, whatever. So what have I you? Tell you she's like, okay, what's it drawing now? Nine point nine. Nine point nine. Right. If I turn on this bullshit off, now what? Same. Oh, eight point five. Seven point seven. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Shane told me that all these little LEDs, they all draw like a little bit. When you add, add them up cumulatively. Cumulatively? That's a big word. It is a big word. For this time of night. <laughs> Did you flick the breaker for your aircon? No, okay, so that's what I was about to say. That we have 9% uh, state of charge and Nick has agreed that tonight is the night. We're going to run the air conditioning. Oh, and we off we go. There you go. There she is. You ready? I'm ready. Ready for? I'm so ready. Which temperature do you want? I think we can go a bit further down than 20. <laughs> you know, hang on a second, in Greece we had a big row for like 10 years about you wanting it at 21. I know, we have an ongoing argument over... No, not 21, no, never 21. Always lower. The lower the better. What are we drawing now? We're drawing 27 amps. But the startup is um, a lot more thirsty. But we've just put it on bed mode, which is, I don't know, I suppose the most efficient mode. It, Nick, what, how does bed mode work? It kind of starts off at the lowest temperature and then after an hour it goes up by a degree and then after another hour it goes up by another degree. Yeah. And then it keeps that, that second temperature yeah. going for like six hours and then it turns itself off. So it will turn itself off like at know, two o'clock in the morning or something. On that note, good night. I will be back in the morning and we will see. Icy drink, air conditioner. Yeah. We will see what our set of charge is for our batteries. Remember, 90%. Let's see what it is in the morning. What do we use about 50% of our battery? We use 45% of our battery running an air conditioning unit. It's a 90 maybe. Um, this is where your this is where your theory goes wrong when you didn't take down the original measurement and then well, forgot it's on, it. It's on film, but definitely I was not expecting it to be down by forty to forty. It's not just the air yeah. conditioning series. We also got like uh, the nice machine. <laughs> oh well, it's not really working. Well, we'll replenish that later. Yeah, 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 we'll we are on the Balance 442. This boat is insane. We are looking at the Vision 444. Well, it looks like a heat shrunk version of our boat. Moments like this, I just think, oh my God, how good is this? We have had a very dramatic couple of days. The craziest thing of my entire life just happened. Not the best idea. We learned a lesson today. When it's salt water, which is a problem, Sailing can bite you in the ass yeah. very, very, very quickly.